Beaumont, Texas. Welcome to Beaumont! Mamu and Ville Platte, Louisiana. These are my American roots, where my ancestors walked, celebrated, and most importantly ate. I am on a mission to travel the same roads and uncover new traditions. Grandma's gonna show me where she grew up and why food has been such a mainstay in our family. My growing up was, was great. We didn't have much, but we had family, food, a roof over our heads. We had all that we needed. This is big for me too, and I've always been interested in where our people have come from and where you grew up, <laughs> where you walk the streets, because if I'm not going to learn it from you, who am I going to learn it from? Exactly. Dwayne, crawfish pioneer. This man purchased his first couple of acres right after high school for pennies on the dollar. There's no way he would have thought that 50 years later, he'd be one of the biggest crawfish farmers in all of Louisiana. He's gonna teach me how to catch and clean crawfish. Oh, I got some big ones. Explain the growing seasons and how rice is grown in between the beds. It's a never ending process. We're either prepping for rice next year mm -hmm. and crawfish or catching crawfish or harvesting rice. What's more profitable, crawfish or rice? Crawfish. Crawfish, hands down. I don't know about you all, but I'm ready to eat some crawfish. Yeah, sounds yes. good. All right. Whoa. You, those are big. This sucker is going in to the bath. The seasoning bath. So you said nine weeks until it gets nine, that nine big. To nine to 12 weeks. This is your spice blend. Yes. Celery. Cayenne. Coarse salt. Onion. That is good. Oh my God, I'm so excited for this. Look at that, they're already starting to turn. Yeah, there she is. Just gonna twist and pull, and then pop this part off. And all you need is that first couple layers, because then you pinch the bottom part out. And you can suck the whole thing out of there and get all the meat out. And the better you get at it, the more crawfish you eat. Because normally you have a bunch of people around the table. <laughs> and if you're slow at eating crawfish, you will not get that much. This is the best crawfish I've ever had. Cousin Neil! It's time to meet Cousin Neil. Sure, Good. Full-time sheriff and part-time line cook. He's gonna show us how to make a backcountry favorite snack, crackling. We're gonna start off with a gal in the whole glory. Hog lard. Yeah. And the whole lard is actually grease from previously made crackling. Okay. The pork belly is first bathed in a previously used lard to intensify the flavor and water at a low temperature. The water cooks down the collagen and gently unwinds the once tight muscle fibers of the pork belly to produce a more tender product. Once the water is cooked out, the first frying begins. Stirring, stirring, and more stirring, like a witch with a cauldron to ensure a perfect golden brown. Now once that's achieved, the pork is removed and dried with fans, cooling and drying the skin furthermore. Then it returns to the cauldron at a higher temperature for the final fry in order to puff that skin and give the dish its signature name, crackling. Cracklings are finished with Creole spice and then it's ready to eat. Super crispy yet delicate at the same time. Puffed skin and pillowy pork belly is a match made in Creole heaven. I've never had fresh crackling before. I've always had it on the side of the road, and to have it like this at someone's home, um, just one of the reasons I came down here, so I appreciate you. Not a problem. Yeah, and it's good meeting new family. Yes. Yes. Lastly, Cousin Neil opens his vault and reveals his winter bounty. Oh, shit. <laughs> Those are real squirrels. Oh <laughs> About 15 squirrels. That's right, fur and guts included frozen in time. Tastes like chicken, huh? 
<laughs> no, I taste that squirrel to me. You have a skillet in the animal? Put it back in. Chicken. Is it? Mm hmm. <laughs> Please tell me you got that. <laughs> uh, we made it. We made it. Yes, <laughs> the sausage link. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. This is so I know. Your favorite place. <laughs> Oh look, they're making boudin. It's a giant pile of boudin in the corner. <laughs> you see that? This brings back so many memories for me because my grandmother used to actually come here when I was a little kid and send care packages to the Bronx. So we would have boudin and hot sausage links in the freezer at all times. Mm. So good. Cheers. <laughs> This is such a treat being able to travel the roads you traveled mm -hmm. all these times together. Mm -hmm. To have done this with you, my only grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to go and see how boudin is made. <laughs> I've eaten enough boudin in my life. I want to see how it's made. Right, Grandma, we made it to DJ. You said it's yes, your favorite yes, boudin yes, place. Exactly. Let's go get some boudin, all right? All right. We actually got a chance to see how boudin was made on a large scale in one of the most famous boudin houses in the country. Locked and loaded. <laughs> Welcome to DJ's. Thank you. We make the best boudin in Texas. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, this is a lot of boudin. You might think boudin is just a sausage, but you'd be wrong. It is a spicy Cajun specialty of pork, onions, peppers, long grain rice, and a host of aromatics and spices, all stuffed into pork casings, and then steamed to perfection. It is a huge source of regional pride around these parts, and you might even hear some locals referring to it as Cajun caviar. This smells incredible. Yeah. <laughs> this smells so good. Cheers. Cheers. I may say this is the best food I've ever had in my life. It is. <laughs> y'all have a good day. Y'all come back, you hear? All right, man. Take care. Right. Thank you. <laughs> the most fun I've had in a long time. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Good. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Mamou, Louisiana. The birthplace of Mardi Gras. The Cajun music capital of the world. Along the way, we passed the church where my grandmother was christened. So this is the church that you used to come to, Grandma? This is the okay. church where I was christened. Where you were christened? I was christened here. This is where it all started. That's where it started. Your right. path started. Her name still lies in the book to record the African-American births. I know it's desolate here right now, but it's about to get crazy, all right? There's gonna be all types of floats coming through here, beads flying through the air. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be amazing. So we finally made it to the route and you can feel the energy. And we bartered with a very inebriated gentleman at 7 a.m. to get on the float and took off. We're gonna throw some bees, we're gonna chase some chickens. It's gonna be a great day. Can I get two claps and a Ric Flair? <laughs> Woo! All right, we're gonna work on that. <laughs> Along the way, the roads were modestly dotted with early goers looking for beads, and in return, they threw us some boudin. Only in my move are you gonna throw some beads and they throw you boudin back. Cheers to that. I'm on a float in my move eating boudin. Life is good. Now the Chicken Run is a wildly amazing place. You can see ATVs ripping through the mud, children chasing chickens, and it's all surrounding a fried fish shack. I smell food. You got shrimp, catfish, wings, even pork ribs that are deep fried until golden brown and are served with a generous helping of red beans and rice. We left Mardi Gras in Mamou feeling pretty successful. to 
just pay my respects. Not that I don't every day, yeah. but... Since you're here. Mm-hmm, since I'm here. Generations of my family have lived in this part of Southeast Texas and Southwest Louisiana. Their history runs deep. And today, we're visiting the grave of Grandma Cassie's mother and my great-grandmother, Momo, to pay our respects. She's in a better place, that's, mm-hmm. that's for sure. I like, I like what you said. Know where you came from and know where you're going. You know where you're going. What are you, what are you gonna take away from this trip? I was able to bring you to my hometown to walk the streets and drive the streets that I grew up on. And I am just elated that I could do this. This house has been in our family for at least six decades. Hey, what's up? Tom Timmy, Tom Timmy! We finally did it. My time! We made it. <laughs> We're greeted by Cousin LG. My brother, my brother. How you doing? Brother, brother, brother. How you doing? Good. Great, great, great. Oh, sweetie, sweetie. Ah. The hugs are tight and the smiles are wide. Oh, my God. Come on, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This was my room. What? Right yes. You had a back door too? Yes. That's where your boyfriend used to come in? No. Ah, no. yes. Grandma, come inside, please. That's the fancy over here. There's home cooking. This food has deep roots and deep scents. Some Texas toast. Classic. Crustacean bodies that were used to flavor the stock for the etouffee still dance in the air. Oh my goodness. Wafting like a cartoon aroma. This is proper etouffee right here. Home cooking is like a warm hug. It gives you all the feels. Mmm. It is good. He makes a good etouffee. And when family is cooking, that hug feels a little tighter. This is comfort food for me. This is something that I grew up eating, so it's something that resonates with me and it reminds me of family. It reminds me of home. It reminds me of traveling here as a kid. You can taste all the Creole spices in there. Celery, bell pepper, onions, garlic, thyme. And then the key to this is the crawfish fat. So you take that and you emulsify that into the roux. And then you add your shrimp stock and let that simmer. And then throw the shrimp and the crawfish in at the last minute. This is delicious. Hey, Hi, Yolanda. What's in here? It's good. Oh my goodness. I'm, I want her recipe. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's in the jeans. There it is. Yeah, it's in my jeans now. <laughs> <laughs> it's filling them out. That's yeah. delicious. Well, I appreciate you all. Thank you all for having me and getting together. I haven't seen some of y'all in a long, long time. Brother, I'm proud of you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Family is always important. Without family, there's no success. Very welcome. <laughs> this trip meant so much to me for various reasons. Family, culture, and discovery, to name a few. And I leave the Deep South with an even deeper appreciation for my grandmother and what she had to do to preserve our culture. You don't know where you're headed unless you know where you came from.